So today we are doing domains and rain and um, the couple of things that we need to go over. So the very first thing is the, um, the table right here. So we are talking about the point that are included. So we talk about a solid dot. And then we also talk about an empty dot. So think about a solid dot as something that included. So whenever you yield domains and rain, and we're gonna go over them in example, but you go into yield the bracket. So think about bracket as something being very strong and solid. And also whenever we think about a solid point, that means the points are include. When you include, so for example, I'm going to have X greater than two. All the number that greater than two, we could have, for example, three, four, uh, five, anything, a hundred, whatever. But we will not include it number two because it's a greater than two. So for that reason, the point are not included and the sign gonna be greater than or less than. But if I have X greater than and equal to two, same thing, we have three, four, five, anything more than two. But we also included number two because it's greater than and equal. So for that reason, we include point number two. So that's why the line gonna be greater than and equal to less than and equal to. Also today we will talk about infinity. We have negative infinity and positive infinity. Uh, negative infinity, positive infinity, since we do not know what number exactly to be for infinity. So it's always going to be a not included, it's always gonna be a parenthesis and always going to be a less than and greater than. There are several ways for you to um, write down infinity. You can just say all real number, the entire real number in the word. You can also say X belong to, so the E right here look like a letter E, but it's technically not, that notation mean belong to. So X belong to our real number. Or you can also say uh, less than this one right here at an increase in order from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can also use a parenthesis, just like we said, not included. So in order to indicate infinity. So how do we use all of that in here? So let's go ahead and so I have two examples right here. We're gonna talk about domains and rain in interval notation. Um, so let's give it a try. So here we go. Whenever we think about interval notation, I always think about a starting point and an end point. Um, so for domain, so domains and rain in nothing but the boundary. It's all about a boundary. So here we go. For boundary, we have think about the domain, okay? So domain is X and it go in this way from the left to the right. So my starting point is always on the left. That's how you have to know it. That's your start point. And then you also find your end point. Your end point is always on the right. So you, that is the only two points that you have to look for. Okay, the boundary, the start point and the end point. So in this example, I'm gonna look at the one right here on the right, just so it's easier to look at right now. I'm gonna have um, my x-axis going this way. So my starting point is from here, right? So I'm gonna do a mark on the x-axis. This is a solid. And right here, I'm gonna have zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So my starting point is on the x for the example in negative five. My end point is gonna be on the right. It's gonna be on this side. And it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I know that I start from negative five and I end at negative five. So that's in my starting points and my end point. We're gonna write it in interval notation as simple as you have to list down your number. So negative five and five. We know that on negative five, you see a solid dot, that means it included. So that means I wanna use a bracket. Uh, at five, when I look up right here, it's an empty dot. So that's mean I parenthesis. So your answer is gonna be domain going to be negative five comma five. I always have a habit of always cross out the answer that not good. So negative five, five, this one's not right because obviously we have parenthesis brackets. So let's go ahead and, and cancel the wrong answer. Let's go ahead and try the rain, okay? So the rain is on the y-axis. So what way does the rain go? I always think the range that up and down, but normally awfully we're gonna go from the bottom to the top, right? So this is the bottom and think about the top. This is my start point and this is my end point. For those bottom points, I'm gonna look from the bottom. My lower points is right here. 
And we have to look at the y-axis. So you have to mark on the y-axis. So I will see that I start at zero. And then I'm going to go all the way. We, we tend to see that we're gonna end here, but actually not. We're gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna be right here. So we end at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to be zero and six, okay? So zero and six. I wanna write my number down on zero. As you can see, this is a solid dot. So it's going to be a bracket because this is solid, okay? And right here on six, as you can see, it's an empty dot. Um, it's an empty dot right there. So I'm going to change it to an empty dot. So, so cool. Okay, so that's going to be parenthesis. Given me at the answer is going to be B, okay? B for the best. All right, so that's in one example number one. I would like for you to pause right here and give it a try for the next question. So let's imagine five minutes already passed and you are trying question number two, right? Let's give it a try again. Again, I'm gonna do it in the um, domains and range. Um, I like to write it down. Um, so I always gonna remember domains is X, range is Y. Domains are gonna go this way, left and right. I'm looking for my starting point. So I'm gonna go from the left. Every single time I see the arrow, it's telling me that I keep going, meaning I don't know where I start. Meaning my left going to be negative infinity because from the left, this is negative infinity, positive infinity, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it right now here. I'm gonna keep going and keep going and keep going and I start right there. That's going to be on zero, so that's my end point. Again, negative infinity, we already talked about infinity. We don't know where, so it's gonna be in um, parentheses. On zero, this is a solid. You don't, we don't see any uh, circle, any empty dot. So that means this is a sol solid. So it's gonna be a bracket. Okay, let's go ahead and cross out the wrong answer. Okay, so we have B and C is out of the way. Let's talk about the rain, okay? The rain are going up and bottom to the top. So let's see bottom, B and T, bottom and top. So you're gonna look at the, from the bottom. I always think about the bottom. So as you see, bottom negative infinity, boom, 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 boom. But I actually start from zero. So my bottom is going to be zero. And I keep going, I keep going. I really wanna say that I stop at two, but again, the arrow telling me that I keep going and I keep going. I don't really know when I'm gonna stop. So for that reason, I'm gonna be infinity, okay? So zero infinity. I'm gonna write like this, so it's easier for you to see. So zero, it's a solid again. So bracket, infinity is uh, parenthesis. We don't know where infinity is forever, right? We don't know how long forever is. So your answer going to be with one that's going to be D, okay? So that's it. Okay, so that is how you find domains and range by interval. I uh, really hope that you write out a keyword boundary looking for your starting points and your end point from the left, from the right, um, from the bottom and the top, okay? So those are the left, those are the right. You look for the bottom and you also look for the top. Those are the starting point that we have to look for. All right, um, the next question right here, uh, let's try one more. Same thing, same thing. I'm going to look for domains, E, X. Okay, I hope that you actually pause the video and go give it a try yourself and then check the answer with me to see if you got the right answer or not. So this is gonna be the rain and it's going to be Y. So again, domains going from the left to the right. Um, maybe you don't have to put the, uh, uh, the arrow. To put the lines is enough. Okay, so here we go. So from the left, again, I see an arrow right here. So it's telling me I keep going. So from the left, the left keep going. As you can see, I'm looking at the x-axis right now. I'm looking at this way. And the left keep going. So my left gonna be negative infinity. I'm from the left, so negative infinity, positive infinity, right? I keep going, I keep going, but I actually stop here. Boop. So right here, you know, I actually stop right there. So that's going to be four. Okay, infinity parenthesis at four, it's just an empty, so that's the uh, parenthesis. I like to cross out the answer, here we go. Rain, I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top. From the bottom again, so we're gonna go this way, correct? So from the bottom, as you can see, all the way from the bottom, because it's keep going down, we're not sure when, so start from the bottom, so that's gonna be negative infinity, big time. 
And I keep going, I keep going until I hit here. I stop right there. And that's going to be three, okay? So here I go. So I have negative infinity and three. Again, infinity without even worry about it, only parenthesis. At three, um, can't really see it because I kind of draw too much, but it's gonna be a, we don't see any empty dots, so that's this bracket. Okay, so that's it. Then it will be eight. So what we just did is trying to do the means and range in interval notation. So what about we're gonna give it a try in inequality notation. When you think about inequality, you, uh, we're gonna talk about, when we think about inequality, we are talking about um, the le less than, less than and equal to, uh, greater than, greater than and equal to. So those are the notation. Whenever I think about the left, if I don't remember, I always think about my left hand. Okay, left for the left. So think about your left hand or put your hand out, you will see. And the opposite of that, the right hand, then we have more. So that's going to be more and this is the right. Okay, so here we go. So uh, exactly the same thing like what we did do. So give it a try. So I'm gonna do domain. I'm going to do domains is X. Uh, it's always look from the left and the right, right? My starting point from the left, I start from here. I'm gonna mark it. So this is my starting point and this is my end point and I'm gonna mark them. My starting point is one, my end point is going to be nine. And you can see right here, uh, unlike, unlike the interval, this one is talking about inequality. So um, you look at one, how a one compared to nine is obviously less than, right? We wanna, it does look good like that, but the only difference is this time you just have to put the X in between because this is what is saying that the domain running from here to here. So this is X is in between. Um, so I also go into put another less than again because it's in between and now is the hour maximum. So this is gonna be another less than. Let me stay consistent with the same color. Um, so uh, what we're going to look at it right now is e on one, is this an empty? So that's why I'm gonna be just less than, but on nine, it is solid. So I'm gonna be less than and equal to, okay? Just like that. So I cross out the answer choice that doesn't have that. Whoa, we are pretty lucky. We end up with the answer choice J. However, I still wanna finish them. So I'm gonna try the rain. And the rain going to be Y. Again, Y and I go from the bottom to the top. Okay, so here we go. Start from the bottom, so the lower point right here, but you wanna mark it on the Y axis. Okay, so that's going to be zero. The high point is over here, but again, you wanna mark it on the Y axis, so that's going to be nine. And you can just write it sideways, you can see, so zero and nine. So in between, in between is going to be, in between the number is a Y value, any Y value, so you put Ys again. And we have this and this. To check for zero, this is solid, so that's gonna be equal to. On nine, there's already a, another solid, we already saw that earlier. So that going to be another equal to. So that leaving out at the answer, J would be, we already know the answer, still I would like to show you what it meant, okay? So that is um, domains and range in inequality notation. As you know, right here with this question, we have clearly two endpoints. We, we clearly have two numbers. We got one, we got nine, we got zero or nine, like two endpoints. What if a question that doesn't have an endpoint? So for example, like question number five, if you take a quick look right here, I um, would like to give it a try. Um, the arrow right here, every single time you see the arrow, I have a habit to like put it a little bit extend just so that we know that it keep going. So I'm gonna try domains again. So my domain is going to be X. I'm just gonna put on the sign. This is left, this is right. What are my starting points on the left? Do I really know? Mm, maybe at negative two, do you think so? But I keep extending. Maybe negative three, no. Maybe negative four. Can I extend more? You can keep extend and extending and extending. So for that reason, I really don't know where to mark. So for that reason, my left gonna be negative infinity and positive infinity. There are so many ways to write infinity. We already talked about that previously, but let's go ahead and check the answer choice to see what one talking about infinity. 
We know that infinity means x belongs to R. R stands for all real number. So I can cross out answer choice A and C already, okay? So let's go ahead and try rain. The rain right here is Y. Again, I have my bottom and I have my top. The bottom point is the lower point on my face, but that critical point right there is set one. And I keep going and I keep going. I want to find my other end point, but I can't really know where because it's keep going up. So that's going to be infinity. So let's talk about what is the difference from previous question. In this question right here, I have one at one end point and the other end it go forever, um, infinity. Um, so for that reason right here, instead of uh, doing that, we let's just take a look at the answer choice, see how they write it on the answer choice. We know that the special numbers is at one. So obviously the, this, the only thing that have this one is answer choice B. Believe in me, the answer choice D is not an answer because it says zero. But how do we look at it? So as you can see right here, if you have two end point, then you write it like this, right? But here, as you can see the number E above, the graph E above number one. So that means all you have to say is E Y greater than, greater than and equal to one because that's a solid. So you don't have, if you want to do like with the interval, like what we've been doing earlier, like you can do it like this. Oops, my bad, I make a mistake. So right here, just gonna be a less than only, I mean less than only. You can do like that, it's still okay, but people don't really like it, like to write it like this whenever you have two end point, but it's not like one of the end are like infinity. You just have to write it like this for a shorter version. Why? Because when you said y more than one, people already understand that any number more than one, any number in the words is already, you don't really have to include that infinity size in it. So that's a little different. I hope that you know it. So for example, right here, one more time, we have two end point, right? Like two physical number. Like you clearly see two number, like two numbers, you know? But right here, we only see one number and the other ends is infinity then you don't really have to write it like this way. All you have to say is y more than one because it's above, it's more than one, okay? So that is an example right there. So here we go, here's our function, I'm gonna grab them. Everybody know f of x is nothing but y, so I'm just gonna grab them over here. Um, let's go to decimal. So you have an option to put y equal, if you don't want to, that's fine. To get that, you have to activate your key path and go down here and go under function. You're gonna go all the way to where I said um, miscellaneous right here, and I'm gonna look for this logo, but very similar to what we have. And I'm gonna change that to three, and I will type what we have, x minus three. Uh, make sure you get out of that root, and then I put plus two. Okay, so we have a picture like this, right? And I'm just gonna zoom, zoom, zoom to see if anything different. Okay, so look like it's just gonna be like that for a long, long time. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So if I have this picture, look at the graph. From the left, do we know exactly where the left? I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going and going. Do we see exactly where the left? No, nope, not really. And I keep going. I do I know where the right is? No. How about the lower points? I can't really tell, right? Because it's just a line, it's a, a curve line uh, for here, but we don't really see a starting point and we don't even see an end point. So for that reason, what do you think the domain gonna be? Our real number, yes. Okay, so X belong to R. How about the rain? Y also belong to R, or our real number. So in this case, we have to answer C. Okay, so graph them would uh, make a difference. I really hope it makes sense to you. Um, anytime, have questions, please ask. Take care.